Hi everyone, this is Professor Anil Joshi. I am the owner of the portal called www.commercefunda.com. I also have the Facebook page by the same name. So do keep visiting uh, my Facebook page. Now today I am going to explain the consolidation of balance sheet, the initial part which is the working notes. And I know students find this chapter extremely difficult. Once again because they have not understood the concept or the theory part, the fundamentals behind this consolidation of balance sheet. So let me explain those basic working notes which you need to prepare while preparing the consolidated balance sheet. Once these working notes are prepared, your preparation of the balance sheet becomes a very uh, easy task. Now as you know, when do we prepare consolidation or consolidated balance sheet? You know, it is the holding company which prepares the consolidated balance sheet. So and that consolidated balance sheet is the holding company's standalone balance sheet plus the balance sheet of its subsidiary companies. So all put together, it is called consolidated balance sheet. And this consolidated balance sheet and consolidated p &L, uh, consolidated cash flow, these things have to be presented to the shareholders in uh, along with the standalone financial statements in your AGM, AGM of your parent company, right? So let me, f let me explain those working notes. Now we are talking about consolidation of balance sheet in the books of the parent company. So please keep that in mind. Now the first and foremost working note that is required is for splitting the reserves and surplus of subsidiary company. That is the first and foremost working note that is required. So what are you doing? You are splitting the reserves and surplus of your subsidiary company between what? Between pre-acquisition period and post-acquisition period. Now what is this pre-acquisition period and post-acquisition period? Suppose if the balance sheet that is given to you, the standalone balance sheet of parent company and subsidiary company that is given to you is say on 31st March 2019. And the question says that the parent company has taken over the stake, has acquired the stake of the subsidiary company on say 1st October 2018. So in this same 18-19 year, this stake was taken over. Correct? The year end date is 31st March 2019. So now on 31st March 2019, when you are preparing the consolidated balance sheet, it consists of two parts. From 1st April 2018 till 30th September 2018, this is your pre-acquisition period. Because that time the acquisition did not happen. And then from 1st October 2018, when this stake was taken over, Till 31st March, that is nothing but your post acquisition period. Right? So, whenever the company is taken over, you know, in that year, you will have a pre acquisition period or post acquisition period. Not necessarily always, because if the question says that, you know, the company was the subsidiary company's uh, stake was taken over by the parent company on 31st March 2019 itself. What does that mean? That means the entire year was pre-acquisition. From next year onwards, it will be post-acquisition. So in that case, in the working note, everything will come in your pre-acquisition. If the question says that the stake was taken over on 1st April 2018, that means during the year, whatever has happened, that is all post-acquisition. So it depends on the date on which the subsidiary company stake was taken over by the parent company. Right? So remember that and then solve your first working note. So first working note is your uh, breakup of reserves and surplus of subsidiary company between pre-acquisition and post-acquisition. So this will have your general reserves, typically profit and loss account balance, right? Or any other, uh, uh, you know, balance, whichever name uh, they have given for that. Correct? Take the total. Now what you will do is, what is the parent company's stake? So holding company, 
let us say that you know the holding company is owner now to the extent of 70 percent that means remaining 30 percent is held by minorities so whatever are these total amounts 70 percent will be for the holding company and remaining 30 percent will be for the minorities right so this is your first and foremost working note then your second working note is basically to calculate cost of control now what is this cost of control cost of control is nothing but the calculation of goodwill or capital reserve now whenever purchase consideration is higher than the net worth that is taken over that means the payment made is higher so it is a loss so in this situation whatever is the difference between the two gives rise to goodwill why the parent company has paid higher amount to the owners of the subsidiary company only because they feel that the subsidiary company possesses goodwill in the market that is why they are paying higher amount so this extra amount which they are paying is for nothing but goodwill and if it is the other way around that is purchase consideration is less than net worth then this is opposite of goodwill which is called capital reserve so payment made is lesser than what is acquired that means it is a clear case of profit and that profit is capital profit so that is why it is capital reserve right so once you understand this then this is what we are going to calculate in your second working note cost of control so basically what we have to do in second working note you have to calculate net worth and you have to calculate the purchase consideration you have to see the purchase consideration the difference between the two will be either goodwill or capitalism so how do you calculate net worth net worth is shareholders funds and you know i hope you know the formula for net worth it is share capital plus reserves and surplus that is your net worth net of fictitious assets correct so this is your net worth now the only care that you need to take is whatever numbers you are writing here you have to write only to the extent of the numbers owned by the parent company so don't write the full share capital of subsidiary company only write the share capital belonging to the holding company so suppose the subsidiary company share capital is say 10 lakhs and this company is now 70 percent owner so don't write 10 lakhs you have to write 7 lakhs correct because you are talking about the goodwill or capital reserve from parent company's point of view so this is the share capital reserves and surplus is very easy because your first working note is ready now your reserves and surplus will be nothing but this number you don't have to think on that reserves and surplus again now straight away take this number here that is your reserves and surplus why because the question of goodwill or capital reserve arises only at the time of taking over the other company so at the time of taking over the other company what was the reserves and surplus this because this is post acquisition so up to this uh, stage of takeover what was the amount of reserves and surplus belonging to the parent company only this amount so that is why this will straight away go to your reserves and surplus so the total of the two will give you the net worth and then compare that against your purchase consideration the difference between this and this is either goodwill or capital so if purchase consideration is higher it will be goodwill or if it is lower then it is capitalism capitalism correct so it is as simple as that so this is your second working note and then the third working note once you understand this second working note third working note is very simple the third working note is for calculation of minority interest so let me erase this because i want to keep this first working note ready for you the third working note is for calculation of minority interest so what is minority interest minority interest is nothing but the overall net worth of the minority shareholders in this subsidiary company so what is net worth we already know the formula we have discussed share capital plus reserves and surplus 
correct so when you are calculating minority interest what you need to remember is the share capital will be only the one that is belonging to the minorities so going back to the same example if the overall share capital of the subsidiary company is 10 lakhs and the parent company is 70 percent owner that means remaining 30 percent is held by the minorities so that is nothing but 3 lakhs so you have to write 3 lakhs here reserves and surplus again simple because your first working note is ready now in reserves and surplus which number you will have to take what is belonging to the minorities both these numbers you have to take the sum of these two numbers will go to your reserves and surplus here now here why are we taking both these numbers because this minority interest you are calculating at the end of the financial year so at the end of the financial year this and this both are there which are belonging to the minorities so that is why at the end of the year both put together will be part of your minority this is not the minority interest that you are calculating at the time of takeover it is at the end of the financial year that is why even this also will be part of your minority interest so total of the two is nothing but your minority interest which goes to the balance sheet correct so once these three standard working notes are prepared your i would say 80 to 90 percent job is done in terms of preparation of consolidated balance sheet now your the one question that you will have in your mind is sir that you know we have taken this number in our cost of control we have taken these two numbers in minority interest so what about this number then we have not taken this number anywhere right so for this number this is nothing but the profit belonging to the parent company but it is post acquisition so therefore this is nothing but your revenue profit anything after the takeover is revenue profit anything up to the takeover is capital profit so therefore this will go as part of your pnl balance in balance sheet so when you show the pnl balance in consolidated balance sheet you will show pnl balance for holding company and pnl balance for subsidiary company so in that pnl balance of subsidiary company this number will be considered because that is your revenue profit right so this is how we consider all the four numbers in your consolidation of balance sheet so remember these three standard working notes don't make any mistake in preparation of these three standard working notes and once these are done properly there are very less chances that you will make mistakes in preparation of consorted balance i hope i have made this simple for you thank you